and welcome to In-Depth Conversation. I'm your host, Eric Gill, Communications Division Director for St. Lucie County. And on today's show, we're going to talk about the proposed sales tax, which is number 14 on the November 6th ballot. And I have a panel of guests to help me break that down. I have St. Lucie County Administrator Howard Tipton. Thanks for joining me. Uh, City Manager for Port St. Lucie, yeah. Russ Blackburn. And, and we'll Nick wave. will just wave because that's a long <laughs> way. Uh, Nick Mims with the beautiful city of Fort Pierce, as yes, he sir. always says. Yes, sir. Um, but let's start with the first question. How did the sales tax get on the ballot? Well, I think it started uh, well over two years ago, and uh, we have a citizens' budget committee uh, that uh, looks over the county's budget every year. And one of the issues that they had was that we weren't getting to our infrastructure. It was just every year we had less and less of a capital program. And when we talk about infrastructure, we really mean roads and drainage and sidewalks for the most part. And, uh, and so they recommended it uh, two years ago. Um, it was not uh, as strong an effort and ended up uh, losing 53-47, but the need still exists. And so as we've circled back around this year, uh, we, are, we are tied together with the cities, uh, working together. We have about, if, if you look at the numbers from two years ago, it's up over a billion dollars worth of backlog for the infrastructure. Yes. Um, you know, the county has $3 billion worth of roads and you've got to maintain it. It's a big investment. You want to make sure it's maintained. And, uh, and so that really drove the county commission to uh, have some joint meetings with our municipal partners and, uh, and put it back on the uh, ballot for this November. Yeah. And, and quickly, too, for those that don't know, it would take our current, half, our current sales tax, which is 6.5%, up to 7 which is what Indian River County, Okeechobee, Palm Beach, uh, Brevard are all already at 7 yes. um, and as, as Howard said, you know, both the cities had supported this, and the board also changed the time frame. In 16, yeah. we were looking at a 20-year time frame. Uh, this time around, it would sunset after 10 years, and I'm yes, sure that you know, helped convince voters that you know, shorter time frame, give us a try, you know, and let, it, let us show you what we can do. You know, the other thing that's really important, the county and both cities have looked at you know, very specific projects so that, so that citizens and voters will know exactly what you're going to get if you vote for this sales tax. So, you know, for the city as an example, we have a list of projects. That's the only projects we'll do. And, you know, we have 10 years to get them done and we'll be you know, on the hot seat to prove it to the citizen that we're going to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. And we will. Yeah, and I think one of the best things about Port St. Lucie is, you know, one of the big issues has been sidewalks. You know, everyone knows yeah. that Port St. Lucie grew tremendously fast, and you have a sidewalk plan that's a 20-year plan, but this sales tax would help you cut that in half, correct? We actually have a 10-year sidewalk plan, okay. and, but it will take at least 20 years to build out that plan the way it is currently adopted. And if the half cent sales tax is approved by the voters, we will build it in the 10 years. The, you will 20. see dirt flying very fast to put sidewalks <laughs> in on all our major roads. We also have a 10-year resurfacing plan that is probably funded over about 35 years, uh, which is not desirable. No. And so one of the things we, that this, we did as a city after the last effort on the half cent sales tax was we really looked at how can we be better prepared? How can we let people know what projects will be done and what the priority of those projects will be for inclusion in the funding of the half cent sales tax. Yeah, and I think the mayor even pointed out um, that the city will pass an ordinance also to, so there'll be an extra layer of protection to say these are the projects, you know, yes, it's on our website, but we also pass an ordinance to say these were the projects that we're uh, going to do. That's absolutely correct. And so certainly the county's done a good job of identifying what the projects will be and our projects overall are included in that that macro list of projects but we'll we will pass an ordinance that should be on our next council agenda and those are the only projects that can be done and and the projects that are you see in our list that's the projects nothing new yeah mr Mills, what about the city of fort pierce where i'm a resident that is fantastic <laughs> well as you know in in the beautiful city of fort pierce unfortunately we are a little bit older and we do have issues with infrastructure. And we have had deferred maintenance for several years. So unfortunately, that deferred maintenance has created deficiencies in our pavement, deficiencies in our sidewalk. And of course, we always want to keep our rivers and our waterways as clean as possible. But the primary, and I believe the, the number one task that we need to implement 
is the upkeep, the maintenance, and the reconstruction of our roadways. Our roadways, as you know, are, are highly traveled. We have several thousand visitors that come to our community probably uh, on a daily basis, especially to see our beautiful beaches and our beautiful waterfront. And unfortunately, that is taking a toll on our infrastructure. So with this uh, initiative, this gives us the opportunity to realize additional revenue. That additional revenue can definitely help the city of Fort Pierce and its struggle to, uh, to improve upon the deferred maintenance for, that we've had for several years. Yeah. There are over 40 miles of streets in Fort Pierce that are listed in poor condition. This will allow the city of Fort Pierce to move forward with addressing that shortfall, with addressing that deficiency, and getting our neighborhoods in a more sustainable fashion. Yeah. You mentioned visitors, and I think that is one of the uh, benefits of a sales tax is, Absolutely. is it's not just being put on the backs of property owners. Yeah, that's a, it's a great point. I, I think when we look at, at the study that was done, about 20% of the cost of what we're talking about in terms of this revenue stream is going to be borne by our visitors and, and the tourists who are, as Nick points out, absolutely using the roads. Yes. And so rather than having it on the backs of everybody local, um, let's go ahead and, and share that and, uh, and make sure everybody participates in it. But the, the, the key is the money that's raised here will stay here. It doesn't go up to yes. Tallahassee and then we get some portion of that back. That's not what this is. The money that's raised here stays here. Yes. And that also creates some economic opportunity locally because as we pave these roads and, and work on these bridges and do the water quality projects, I know the county has a local um, option for ordinance for to hire local contractors on the city mm -hmm. probably has yes. as well. Or St. Lucie does as well. So yes. again, th those dollars would be raised here and then recycled here back into the community. Absolutely. Yeah, we're talking about a, an income stream that will be about $18.5 million a year starting out. That will grow as the population grows, as our tourism base grows. But uh, $18 million plus of, of new revenue coming in to the community for these projects. Uh, that's, that's a great start on the backlog that we've talked about. And it's important to remember that during the recession, you know, we really had to clamp down. Uh, you know, the gas tax just isn't enough of a revenue stream. That's what you typically think of when you want to do roads. It's just, it's just not there, both uh, from the recession time where everybody wasn't doing anything to today where the cars are just so much more fuel efficient. There's just right. not enough revenue coming in. And yet we continue to build roads to serve this growing population. We're adding about 6,000 people a year or so to uh, this county, and, uh, and you've got to have the roads that keep up with it. Or that question, that comment about the gas tax is important. A lot of folks may not realize the gas tax is not a percentage of what you pay per gallon. It's a finite number of pennies per gallon. Mm -hmm. So as cars become more efficient, you actually, as a, as a county and a city, we actually uh, see a reduced amount of gas tax coming into the communities. Right. And so what we find is there's a need for more roads as we have additional usage on our roads and our sidewalks or lack of sidewalks. You, you have no ability to catch up. Yeah. And it's a, it's a big issue for cities and counties. Well, I'm doing my part. I drive a really fuel efficient Jeep, so I keep <laughs> helping with the gas tax as much as I can. But, uh, um, but let's talk to you about the the breakdown of the funding because you've said it's a little over 18 million dollars and I think some of the feedback we heard last time in 16 was you know residents in Port St. Lucie well what what are the benefits of Port St. Lucie? This is a county tax but really Port St. Lucie yeah. will get a portion of, yeah, of so, this revenue. So the funds are appropriated you know among the county and the cities based on a state formula. The city of Port St. Lucie will receive about seven and a half million dollars. Those are dollars we absolutely don't receive now and could not receive if the absence sales tax is not passed or, or would not be passed by our voters. Mm -hmm. So it's new money, and it's money that is, that is essentially, uh, it's locked up. You can only mm -hmm. use it for roads, road resurfacing, and sidewalks, and cleaning up our waterways. Yes. So it's an infrastructure tax, can't be used uh, to pay our salaries, can't be used to pay for operation of the Civic Center, for operation of, of any dead. other function right. yeah. can only be used for those infrastructure purposes. Now for businesses that might be concerned that you know, this will impact their sales, it, 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 there are limitations on where the sales tax applies. 
It does. It only applies to those things that are currently covered by right. sales tax. So, so a, lot, a lot of food, medical right. items are not. But also there's a cap, so if you were to go out and make a large purchase, like a car for instance, right. it only applies to the first $5,000 of a right. purchase. So that means you're capped at a maximum of $25 of additional cost. Uh, so that's important for everybody to understand. And again, reminding everybody that, that this is then shared. We have some great car dealerships in our, yes, in our we community. Do. We yes. have people coming from all over, and they're helping with every purchase of a car to, right. to help you know, cover the roads as they may be driving that new car back, yeah. <laughs> back home. They're, they're helping to pay for the roads. Yeah. And what about one of the things that was different this time around is the state required the county to go through an audit process. Yeah. Um, you want to touch on that? We, we, we took the brunt for the cities on the audit. Yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> Thank we you did. very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the state did come in and they did an audit of the county's procurement and contract management, uh, project management uh, services, and found that we are efficient, that we procure everything within state and federal guidelines and, and all mm -hmm. the statutes, that we follow our own code of ordinances and uh, that we do a good job and so we've got that posted out on our website and so that was just one of those things that we had to get done in order to move forward with, uh, with, with mm -hmm. this question for the voters. Sure, something different yes. from last time around. Yes, yeah. um, and we've also gotten support um, from some of the local businesses or business communities. I think uh, the Chamber has come yes. out and the Treasure Coast Builders Association. Yeah, no, I, I think we've actually seen a, a broad base of support from the community. And I think, you know, as, as you have conversations with everybody and certainly within the cities, the businesses know if, if the sidewalks aren't there, if the water's not clean, and if you can't get from point A to point B, it's pretty hard to conduct business. It's Absolutely. hard to have a good quality of life. It's hard to kind of grow that economy. And yeah. so with the, with the numbers that we're going to grow by, and certainly Port St. Lucie, is the is the high growth area within yes. our community but you know we've got 150 160,000 more people coming here by 2050 a lot of them coming down that way uh, you know want to make sure that we're ready for it yeah. it's all about quality of life and you, you take for granted if you've been in older communities sometimes that there's a sidewalk there's a bike path that roads are going to be built and then maintained and Part of the, the struggle for Port St. Lucie has been we, you know, we're a new city. We were not designed with sidewalks at all. We were designed with fairly narrow roadways for our, our build-out growth. And so we really need the infrastructure investments to maintain that quality of life that everybody wants when they come to our community. Yeah. So the half cent sales tax gives us that opportunity to deliver on what everybody expects. Yeah. It was interesting, we've, we've been meeting with the different HOAs and uh, throughout the county, and w one of them, um, you know, Mr. Satterley, our Deputy County Minister, was talking about quality of life issues, and Commissioner Hutch, uh, Franny Hutchison and I were talking, and sometimes it goes beyond even quality of life, but really a public safety issue. If we have to close intersections, or we, we've got several bridges that we have have to close, mm -hmm. if that delays response times for first responders, or you know, you go back, the Board of County Commissioners gave the sheriff 700,000 recent years mm -hmm. uh, for new vehicles. Right. Those vehicles aren't gonna last very long if they keep driving down <laughs> some of the roads that in Fort Pierce or <laughs> unincorporated St. <laughs> Lucie County. Wow. That, Thanks, Eric. Sorry. It's because they drive at high speed. Yes, yes exactly yes. what it is. <laughs> you know, Eric, I did want to say that one of the things that I believe this makes this so attractive is the transparency and the accountability of this initiative. With each of our agencies, out the two cities and in the county, we will have a citizen oversight committee. So what the citizens vote for and what they expect to see mm -hmm. will be governed, will be checked, and will be evaluated by a citizen oversight committee to ensure that we are doing it in a very accountable fashion and that we are spending the money just as we have stated. So I think that makes it very attractive, especially for those that may be wary of another tax sure. and that big government just wants more money. This is something that I believe will benefit all involved. Yeah, we had that question the other night. Um, somebody said, well, how long? Is it 10 years? And, and we said, yeah, after 10 years it goes away. And I heard somebody in the back of the room, yeah, right. You know, and <laughs> we said, no, legally, we can't just add it back right. on. It would have to right. go back out to the voters. Right. Right. And in Indian River County, their additional surtax got passed the last election because, mm -hmm. again, they were able to show to their residents and voters the, the benefits that it creates. So yes. we would do the same thing. Now let's talk about the specific projects. I know with the city of Port St. Lucie, you all did some surveys 
and got feedback from the residents and then put yeah. the, and that's how the list was yeah thanks created. eric i'm glad you brought that up because it's it's pretty unique so our city council have been talking about projects that they thought were important to the citizens uh, but to truth test that we put a list of projects in that that had been in our capital plan we put them in our citizen survey last fall and we asked the citizens tell us rank these projects tell us what's most important to you and we were a little surprised actually uh, because some that we knew were important but we didn't know they were the most important so one that came out was the st lucy west boulevard improvements uh, and of course the it's a six lane roadway with turn lanes but at, at every cross street every cross area there's conflict points that are slowing the traffic down and so the citizens ranked that project number one and said we want you to improve the traffic flow there to improve the capacity and so that's our number one project our number two project as identified by the citizens on the survey was sidewalks so very high you know, correlation of what the citizens said they wanted with the projects that are on our list and in the order that they'll be done. Well, how we'll allocate the resources. So another project that was identified was Floresta, a major north-south yeah. connector yeah. from Port St. Lucie Boulevard all the way up to Prima Vista. I used to live off there uh, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what, what started out as a neighborhood street has become a fairly busy street. We want to return it to, to both function as a neighborhood street, but also make sure we have the way to ensure constant movement, turn lanes where appropriate, so you stop the, you know, so traffic isn't just stopped. Short dead stopped, yeah. When, you're, road, you know, yeah. when somebody decides to make a turn. And that project was ranked number four, right behind resurfacing. And so, you know, when you look at our projects, they reflect what the citizens said were important to them, the priority. And the projects. Yeah. And I know at the county level, we, we had a list of projects and we sat down with the board and went through a workshop because you know they, they've gotten the feedback from our residents and a lot of there are a lot of water quality projects as Mr. Mims mentioned, northwest Fort Pierce area, you know, it's a little different than Port St. Lucie. We have a lot more drainage issues up here. And then we, we always tell people too, we're not gonna solve the Lake Okeechobee issues, um, but there's a lot we can do to collect in, in stormwater. And treat it you know i think the platts creek partner is a uh, project we partnered with the city yes. of port st lucie and then indian hills mm -hmm. we work with the city mm -hmm. of fort pierce right. and those are two major drainage projects that have a significant impact on cleaning up the lagoon absolutely uh just the 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 aspect of the marine related commerce that this area has our mission is to ensure that the infrastructure that these companies that these workers have and which is the indian river lagoon our water bodies we have to ensure that they are, you know, vibrant, that there's life, and we keep these, entity, these, keep these water bodies clean. So we have a couple of projects, uh, the George Avenue Basin, which is a very urbanized basin, and that takes in a lot of urban and, and, and uh, impervious area. But, and we're going to now treat that water as pretreatment before it goes to our very precious Indian River Lagoon. Same thing goes for Morris Creek. We've already done a linear park for Morris Creek between 15th Street and 7th Street. We're going, now going to go west between 15th Street to our western extent of our city limits to enlarge Morris Creek to create like a stormwater park, a linear uh, uh, walkway, and also give additional pretreatment for the waters that dump into the Indian River Lagoon. And of course, as we've talked about, street repaving. Street repaving, that's something that, you know, we talk about Fort Pierce, there's a little roller coaster ride, but it's fun. It's a fun <laughs> roller coaster ride, but that's something that we definitely want to address as well. But we do want to protect the industries that we have, boat manufacturers, marine related commerce, the commercial fishermen. We've got to take care of our water, water, water bodies. Especially with our recent expansions of Maverick and yes. some of the, you know, yeah, yeah. Pursuit yes. looking to expand as well. You know, yes. I, I think Russ said earlier that, that, you know, we were not designed and built for the growth and the population that we have and the standards that we have for construction today are very different than what was approved many years ago. And so we find ourselves needing to put in sidewalks where they weren't, to improve that drainage where there wasn't drainage, to, uh, to clean up the waterways, 
because it just wasn't it just wasn't the issue sure. 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Right. And uh, you know we've got a lot of septic tanks out there, and so you know making sure that we control the water that runs off the properties and give it time to settle and and uh, cure, so to speak, is all important. So there's a lot of great reasons to to kind of replumb what we've inherited. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and that's important for the county. Let me just mention uh, two two quick areas. One, when we talk about water quality, we have Indian River Estates, which is a large unincorporated neighborhood mm -hmm. that's right on the Savannas, right right there. And so they are, uh, we, we've done some work in there and it's been very helpful. The, the, the flood yes. control is, yeah, with flooding. Is, right. is down. No, no longer can you just water ski down the street when the water's <laughs> high. But, uh, okay. but it's important to get to the final phases of that and that's one of the things that this revenue will allow. And then Prima Vista, you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's another road that has just completely been over, overgrown with just population and traffic yes. and has not been kept in the state that it should. And, and we want to make sure that that's our number one road project as we come from US-1 going west, meeting up with the city's portion of it, that it's all, all connected and, and, and continuous in terms of the way that it appears and functions and looks. That, that's yes. important. That's what I was going to say. It's a nice project that ties into what Port St. Louis yeah, is doing yeah. on the other end. Of yeah. So, so Howard, you mentioned, and Nick as well, that you know, road standards have changed, mm -hmm. expectations have changed. So, so years back, you know, there was a little bit of stabilizing of a base, and you put some asphalt down on it, and the, the, na the lanes were narrow. There was no water quality, no drainage. No. There was no thought about where does the water go. So the projects that we'll be building, you know, so Floresta, the St. Lucie West improvements for the city, and I'm sure like projects for both the Fort Pierce and the county, are, we're going to be, they're going to be holistic projects, projects that, in, that address the water quality mm -hmm. issues. You know, for our new street that will be in this project, we'll have sidewalks, we'll have bike lanes, you know, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll ensure that, that people have choices. Sure. And transportation, mm -hmm. and, but that what, when we put that that impervious structure down, the water will also be pretreated. So when it does go to the Indian River Lagoon, does go to the North Fork, you can be assured that that project won't be hurting our waterways. And that's really important because today I can't tell you that yeah. those projects were built. The water just kind of sheet flows off and gets there somehow. Sure. One, yeah. one of the questions that came up uh, at a recent HOA was, um, what other sales taxes have the county passed that they take, or the cities have that have gone on the ballot and then come away? And the only one I could really come up with was uh, the environmental lands tax, which was uh, approved by the voters mm -hmm. in the late 90s, yes. and I think it was 20 or 25 years. I remember it, when it came off the board, but that millage, and that wasn't a prop, that was a property tax, not a sales tax. So that was on the backs of just property owners, but once that millage rate expired, it came off the mill. Yeah, you know, it came off the tax roll, and the county was able to collect twenty million, or you know, do a twenty million dollar bond. But we matched that with state and federal dollars, and we bought seventy six million dollars worth of lands that we now have ten thousand acres of preserves. And right. imagine there's that same kind of opportunity here with this eighteen million. Well, I think there is, and th one other thought: uh, there was a, a millage that was passed, I think, by the voters for a small property purchase down at the port called Harbor Point. Yep. And that came off the tax rolls about two years ago when that property was paid off. So again, just, you know, it's on there for a, s a specific period of time and then it goes away. I know the citizens of Port St. Lucie tax themselves to build the Crosstown yep. uh, Parkway. And, uh, you know, that bridge is, is underway. But so, so lots of examples, mm -hmm. I think, of being kind of true to the word. Yeah. And a lot of these projects too, especially the road projects, mm -hmm. were also fall in line with the TPO rankings mm -hmm. to help us get those state and federal dollars. I'm glad you brought that and up here. transportation yeah. planning, or I, for those that don't know what TPO right, is, right, I right. speak too much so, sometimes. So <laughs> one of the real pluses of the half cent sales tax for all of the local governments is that it gives us an ability to leverage resources. Yes. So there's often grants available from the federal or the state government but they require a significant yeah. match. It's usually yeah. at least 50%. And so we see that if we have these sales tax dollars available, it'll give us an opportunity to not get $18.5 million worth of road work done each year, but far beyond that by leveraging our resources, by bringing 
to St. Lucie County, to Port St. Lucie, to Fort Pierce, some dollars from the federal government, some dollars from the state government that wouldn't be here otherwise because we we wouldn't have the leverage. We wouldn't have the match to those grants. Right. And I do have to echo what Russ just said. Were it not for the Natural Resource Conservation Service or the, the Florida Department of Transportation or the Florida Department of Environmental Protection or South Florida Water Management District, the city of Fort Pierce probably wouldn't be doing a thing as far as capital improvement projects. The ability to have this guaranteed steady stream of revenue gives us that leveraging ability and now we can become even more productive in our capital improvement program. That is, the, that is probably one of the most impressive aspects of this initiative. And so to that point, as we've identified the projects that we're going to get done in detail and given some cost estimates to what we think they're going to be, yes. if we're successful in this, and I absolutely believe we will be, yes. and we end up with some additional dollars, City of Port St. Lucie's approach to uh, additional projects is going to be what, Russ? So we have, we have kind of three different things. One is we can always build more sidewalks. We can always resurface more roadways. But we actually have a line item in our, in our proposed funding for, citizen, for a citizen-initiated project. And it's, it certainly could be a contingency if another project goes to a little high. But our belief is that we're going to be holding a community meeting or a series of community meetings to try to find out what do you as a citizen want? What did we, what did we miss as we're looking at building out this 10-year this plan? Is there something that, you know, when it was envisioned several years back, we missed? And so we will follow, like we did on our citizen survey, some process very similar that engages our community to make sure that we meet the needs of Port St. Lucie residents. Yeah. And, I, and I think the opportunity for, for all of us to do a similar program, because we are, we are going to have that success and we yes. are going to, I think, be in this position where we can go back to the community and say, let's keep going. What else can we do? Yeah. And there's also the prospect of uh, us doing collaborative projects. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the, the working environment that we've created here recently between our three bodies of government has just been uh, superb. I would say that the prospect of us now coming up with projects that could improve the lives of all three of our communities can definitely uh, come to fruition now. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. Mr. Mins, you touched yes. on a little bit earlier about tourism being up and the amount of revenues, oh, yeah. and that's one of the, the kind of frustrating things as a communicator <laughs> to explain, because <laughs> everybody said, well, your tourism revenues are at record highs. Why don't you use that money for paving roads? Mm. But uh, or you know, but those but dollars that come in for the bed tax are allocated for specific projects, just yes. like debt services and, and some of the other fine and forfeiture funds that the county has or MSTUs or yes. CRAs, which is a lot of government talk at home that people probably <laughs> don't know what all that is. But right. Um, right. so kind of touch on everybody's got their own gen revenue stream that's allocated for specific projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. We have grants uh, that we might get for beach renourishment. I can't take those grants and then turn around and do a road with it. Uh, you mentioned the tourist tax and, and those dollars coming in, of course, support the, uh, the first data field, the spring training home of the New York Mets. Uh, we can't take those dollars and go do a, a water project with those. And, uh, and it's, it's one of those things that's the hardest to communicate. Because if you look at the total numbers, they're all big numbers. Oh, you know, yes. you look at that budget and you go, wow, you guys just have... Just that from up yeah, here. Just do that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, people pay right. tax on, so for solid waste, right. as an example. So they're paying tax into, so that we can manage the landfill and make sure that that uh, continues as an enterprise fund, which means it doesn't receive property tax dollars. It's right. a rate-supported, uh, rate-payer-supported enterprise. Um, but you can't just move those dollars around. And right. it's just always been hard to explain. Mm -hmm. It, uh, I like to describe it as buckets. So we have a number of different buckets of money. Uh, our general fund is the one most people think about, and that's where you pay for the, you know, for law enforcement, or yes. you pay for general government if you're a city. Uh, but we can't take money out of the bucket for utilities, where we have water and sewer rates and those revenues. We can't put it on our general fund. Likewise, we can't take our gas tax money and spend it in the general fund which is good because that way we know we'll have money spent on roads and on sidewalks. 
but there's only so much money in that bucket. And so when it's out, it's out. And we're, you know, we're oversubscribed. You know, we have more projects <laughs> than we possibly can fund out of that bucket that's water that's for our roads and our gas tax funded projects. I have to use that word, oversubscribed. <laughs> I want to use that in the future. Well, you know, Russ mentioned the city was on a, was it a 35-year repaving yes. cycle? Yeah, ours right. is a little longer. Ours is a little, <laughs> you know, we, we're more than double that right now with the county at 75 years. And so um, it's just one of those things that it's also kind of a business case for this. And that is yeah. that you have, in the county's case, $3 billion, that's with a B, dollars worth of road infrastructure. And if you don't maintain it, you have to not just repave it, you have to rebuild it, which can be right. seven to ten right. times more expensive than just the maintenance side sure. of it. And so like anybody at home, if you have a roof that's leaking, the idea is let's fix the roof before the whole thing kind of collapses. Correct. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to do is just get a handle really on the maintenance side of it. Yeah, because like you said, when you go back to rebuild, as Mr. Blackburn said, it's it, it's different now. you got to right. get additional sidewalks and stormwater collection, so it costs a lot more. Talking about business aspects, that's some of the feedback I've seen on social media. Well, mm -hmm. stop offering business incentives and make them pay the full taxes. But what people don't understand is, say, when we'd offer a tax abatement, to say, let's use Maverick as an example, to expand, they're still paying other taxes. They're still paying 50% of this tax bill to the school district and the fire district and South Florida Water Management. And, and if we don't offer those incentives, there are other p counties around the state and even other states that will lure them away. And then that's a, not only just, that's a loss, not more jobs coming in, but a loss of existing jobs. Yes. Sure, no, they're, they're, you know, they're paying gas tax, obviously. Uh, sometimes impact fees, and so those are also used for the roads. Uh, but you think about all of their employees, hundreds of employees right. that are in the community and they are paying taxes and doing all of those things. I mean, you know, you want to be able to grow the economy first and then have the challenges that we're having rather than having, you know, a ghost town or businesses shuttering and people going somewhere else because we're not in a competitive environment. And, and at the end of the day, honestly, the amount of incentives that we give are, are fairly minor. Uh, we're thankful that the state of Florida and others might be able to do more with some of the incentives, but, but really the amount that we're providing is, is a, it's really small in the scale of things. When, right. when you think about a billion dollar shortfall right. in infrastructure, yeah. and what we're talking about is about that much. That's the <laughs> one thing the things I thought, because somebody made a comment about the port purchase, which the county right. did to, to spark, to help the city of Fort Pierce, the economic development. 25 million, but like you said, we have billions billion of dollars, you know, that even if we didn't make that purchase, we, that 25 million couldn't have easily been spent on. No, no, it would have been project. gone in, in, in an instant. <laughs> yeah. but, but the good news is, and just right. a quick update on yeah. that, you know, we anticipate that the revenue from the port is actually going to cover the debt service on that, on that cost. And so it's really going to be revenue neutral. neutral. Uh, or cost neutral to, yeah. to the county for that. Right. And, it's, and it's because of the, the minor incentives that we do offer as the cities and as the county that we do attract these businesses that create the jobs that have our neighborhoods now sustainable. For several years as we went through the economic downturn, our neighborhoods were almost abandoned. We had homes that were overgrown, homes that were neglected. Now we're seeing our neighborhoods be vibrant again. And it's because of the efforts of our agencies that we have working people here contributing to their community, working here buying groceries. I, th I think the steps that we've taken have been definitely productive. Yeah, the county's had a, and the city's had a lot of wins. You guys had a couple of groundbreakings recently. With we, we have, and, and tomorrow morning, we have the groundbreaking for City Electric. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and we competed with Charlotte, North Carolina, and Dallas, Texas. The county and the city went together and said, so we want you to, they, they had a presence in Port St. Lucie, uh, almost 200 jobs, but they were, they were very serious about moving out to one of those two states or they would stay here. And we together said, we want you to stay in Port St. Lucie, in St. Lucie County, because not only are they going to keep the 200 jobs, mm -hmm. but they're going to add at least 50 more. And I would say that's... I'm guessing that number is going to be a lot higher than that. But, and so tomorrow they're building groundbreaking for a 400,000 square foot manufacturing and distribution facility. Now there are some incentives in that, but they're actually pretty minor. 
you know, it's a tax abatement for five years. So if they're here 50 years, that means they're paying taxes for yeah. 45 years. Yes. That's a minor number in the scale of things. Right. But think about, just as, as Nick said, think about all the people who will be working there. Think about all of the purchases that company will make. They'll be paying sales tax. Sure. Yes. They'll if be it's paying a distribution center, there's gas tax. And taxes absolutely. on on other things. So the incentives were actually very small as a just a fraction, sure. but enough for them to say, you know, we want to stay here. You know, we, you were welcoming. You made us a proposal and made us feel like we mattered. And so, you know, we're very happy we're going to break ground. But also, I think it's, it's the model we'll have for the future for economic development projects. Yeah, the thing, too, is we talked about leveraging resources earlier. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about our minor incentives, we were able to take that and go up to the state mm -hmm. and, and bring back $3 million yes. for that loop road, That's which correct. really yeah. was some critical road infrastructure in that area for this project and others to kind of grow from. And so it really is, uh, is about taking the small amounts, making smart investments, and going after it and, and making it a reality. And a lot of success stories actually in the city of Fort Pierce yeah. and Fort St. Louis. Yes. Now, this will be uh, ballot number 14 on the amendment, November 6th. So, and there are, so that means there are 13 other ballot initiatives ahead of it, <laughs> but this is the only local ballot, or the only local issue on the ballot. Right. Um, but there are some other things that are on the ballot that could have some negative impacts to our, you know, Amendment 1 is the one, the first one that pops to mind, which is the additional $25,000 homestead exemption. And um, I know the property appraiser has a calculator on their website. They encourage, I encourage everybody to go there to see if you even qualify for that, because I think less than 40% of the property owners in this county would actually get that full benefit. But if it passes, and then it could fail in this county, but pass in statewide, it needs 60% of the vote. Right. That would still have a huge, I know for our budget, it's $8 million deficit. Yes. Right. And, and that would be a deficit for you guys too, probably not at that not high not number. Much, but right. Yeah, we think it's four to five million. Four to five. Yeah. We're about 315000 Okay, yeah, that's still significant in it's the city's budget. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yes, sir. But, but I think to your point, you know, having folks go and check it out, because I think statewide, it's only one in four people would actually benefit from this. Right. And, and you have to be educated about it, because it's, it, it sounds great. Everybody wants to, you know, pay less tax. But at the end of the day, you have to think about it and say, well, yes. you know, are, are the police department, are, is it going to be less expensive for them to respond to a call because they have less revenue? Is it less expensive to maintain a park or a beach? Is it, you know, I mean, it, it's, it sounds great on the surface, but sure. you really have to understand the issues and the impacts kind so, of going forward. So forward. one of the big issues is really is it's continuing to shift the burden. And it's a shifting to a very small number of people, and that's folks who have a little bit higher valued homes. Yes. Yeah, and so those people will pay more, and yet, you know, the, uh, the amount of benefit they get will be minimal. Yeah. And so, you know, we'd certainly urge everybody who who's, wants to know more, go on the county website, go on the Florida League of Cities, the Florida Association of Counties websites, there's information on those websites will help you understand you know, the inequity of our current property tax system. Yeah. And then this doesn't make it fairer, it makes mm -hmm. it less equitable. That's one of the challenging things when, you, when we talk about sales tax and people, you know, because if you're someone like me, lucky enough to live in the same home for the last 20 years, uh, you know, my value is only going to go up, what, 3% a year, right. you know, versus... Or CPI, whichever's less. Yeah, <laughs> versus yeah. my neighbor who just did the same size house five years ago at the peak of the boom, he may be paying three or five, three to five times in taxes what I'm paying, right. but it's the same exact house yep. pretty much uh, in the same receiving neighborhood. Receiving the same right. services. Receiving the same so. services, but so it really is the tax structure throughout the state, but unfortunately we can't fix that. That's... Uh, right. The state legislature keeps fixing it every year for us <laughs> yeah. by shifting the burden back down to us. I, I think your last comment, Eric, is really important. We can't fix that, but we can locally decide if we want to have good infrastructure, yes. if we want to have better roads, if we want to have sidewalks that mm -hmm. don't even exist now, yeah. and we want to improve our water quality. That you can choose, you have a choice on. Yep. Absolutely. It's your vote, your choice, number 14, uh, yes. November 6th, or if you're voting by mail earlier, those will come out in early October. So, yeah. right. 
Is there any other topics or subjects that I didn't get to mention that you guys want to bring up before we wrap up the show? Well, I think one thing that's important, you know, a lot of people will be uh, hopefully watching this program. If you have, if you're a, an officer in a homeowner association, if you're a member of a service club and you need speakers, you want people to just, you know, come educate and inform, you know, all of our elected officials are bought into this yes. and they would like to come and talk to your group. All of our, all of your administrative staff, your yeah. professionals, we're here to give you information. You know, elected officials have a, can actually have an opinion to vote yes or vote no. Yeah. We as paid staff don't, but we can tell you what projects will be funded, mm -hmm. how long this absent sales tax will last, what's eligible, what's not eligible, yeah. and we are more than happy to come and speak to any group anywhere in the county. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, I've said that a couple of times. I'm not here to tell you how to vote. I'm just here to give you the information you need exactly. to make the right decision at the right time. So, uh, exactly. The, the other thing I would mention, too, is I've been asked, you know, what's different this time? And I think the thing that is different is that unified approach. It, was, yes. it wasn't a 3-2 vote that, that got this passed. It was 5-0 from the county, 5-0 from the city of Fort St. Lucie, 5-0 from the city of Fort Pierce. Yes. And that's because we all recognize the need. Now, whether we can get others to recognize it, that's, that's what this education sure. approach is about. But, yeah. but to start with that understanding that the infrastructure from those who deal with it every day is risen to the absolute top of the list, that's mm -hmm. an important message to understand. And I should point out, too, is we're taping this at the end of September when the trim notices go out and all the budget hearings and workshops are. <laughs> right. City of Port St. Lucie, you all have lowered your millage rate three years in a row now? Three years in a row. Um, the county lowered it a couple years ago, we, but we pretty much kept, kept it flat. Kept it flat, PSL. Or Fort Pierce. Farm, yes. Yeah. I, yes. I get my millage. I pay my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Probably not as much as I should because I'm homesteaded for the right, last 20 well, years, but, you know, that's not it's my okay. fault. <laughs> it's okay. But um, we encourage residents to visit our website. We have uh, slchalfcent.com or fphalfcent.com half half yes. or pslhalfcent.com. Yes. All those URLs go to the same site. There's an interactive map. They can look up the projects in their neighborhood. There's also a frequently asked question. If you have a question and you don't see it on the list, email us and we'll... Get it answered by email, and then we'll add it to the list, too. So, Gentlemen, anything else before we wrap up? So a little minor thing, but very important. Yes. You know, we're, going to, we're going to build these projects. If our citizens vote for this and it is approved, you can count on the, the county and the cities to get it done. A great example is Crosstown Parkway, which you know, was a voter-approved initiative for Port St. Lucie. That project is now nearing completion. We expect to have the grand opening of the bridge on the it's part of Crosstown Parkway next November. Uh, people will be driving on it. It's not a toll road. It's a road available for everybody. And it's because citizens had the confidence in their local government to say, we need this, we want it, and we're willing to tax ourselves a little bit to get it. And our commitment has been over a period of years, we're going to get it done. And so it's a good example of what will happen with every one of our sales tax projects. Yeah. Absolutely. This community-driven initiative is born by the community, will be funded by the community, and will be completed by the community. And the dollars Just will come back to the community. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking right. the time today. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, I'll reach okay, real thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm your host, Eric Hill. Thanks for watching this edition of In-Depth Conversation.